the civilization of the internet. Web 1.0 was first established in the early 60s, which was a very one dimensional use for government and research to share information. Computer being large and in mobile, meant to use if you would have to travel to it. First called ARPANET, Advanced Research Project Agency Network, which is, which is what has resolved into the internet we know today. January 1st, 1983, is considered the official birthday of the internet. Prior to this date, computer could not communicate with each other. A new communication protocol was established called the Transfer Control Protocol, TCP IP. Fast forward 40 years, we carry the same concept in the plan of our hands, enabling us to openly communicate, transact, and document every aspect of our lives. It has become a necessarily in living day to day. It meant to bring people closer together by enabling open communication in their personal and private capacity, the problem as much as good as it is, done for humanity, raising funding for terminal ill people, creating general awareness for good causes, and even allowing families and friends from across the world to appear in the, in the palms of their hands. It has done worse from scamming people out of their money to aiding human trafficking, spreading propagandas and hate speech, causing a divide amongst different races, religion, and creed, due to it not being regulated and not being able to hold people accountable. The solution, Web 3.0, will see the implementation of secure IPs linked to people's identity, eliminating fraudulent activities as internet that regulate a user by ensuring they are who they say they are. Being able to, tr to trust someone you have met online because they won't be online if they were not verified. We will be able to conduct businesses without second guessing. The person or the or on the other side, we will be able to, in we will be able to interact knowing that a person is held accountable for the actions online and what they say. Picture and entrance to the internet, that's your DNA or ID, is the key to entering that is what beyond the, the metaverse will create a regulated environment geared towards changing the landscape of the internet we know today. So a more trusted safe heaven for it to be used for the intention it was created for. This opens up the web to unlimited possibility. We have seen that the metaverse will do with NFT and Bitcoin. Now imagine integrating your life with the internet, never having to lose a key again because whatever needs to be open will open with a scan of your DNA, never needing a bank card again because your DNA will pull up your account details. This means you will only have access to what is yours. Your vehicle only starts if you are whatever you program it to, to start it. I love this. You know, we left, you know, the, the pathway of development of the uh, industrial revolution from human efforts to automation, right? Now we are, be, we are going beyond the level of just mere automation, automation to connectivity. Means that someone can be in Nigeria here and control a machine in the US. That's the level we're going to. And we can't do without that. That's why we're saying that. Africa needs to be better prepared. We can't keep folding our hands and waiting for, oh, let's see what America or China or Japan or, or England or where India would do. No, we have to play our part. What is our own local technology? How can we improve it? How can we improve on our local technologies and, and sell the ideas of the world? Not we always on the begging or receiving end. Can we also give out? We have a lot of young people in Nigeria that are well equipped with this on their own. But the school, unfortunately, don't have the proper infrastructures to support them. The environment, that is part of the reasons why ASU is on strike. Right? Government fund academic research. Exactly. This really is so... Yeah. I personally think that this should start from the... When, when a child is um, maybe two, three, four, let them start to understand you know, tech-related solutions. Like, okay, um, let a child understand uh, you know, like what applications are you know, little things in tech. And also, first, we all know that the beginning is actually the use of a computer. So, you know, it's, the, the truth is that very, very few schools, the very good schools, are the ones that give the children exposure, you know, to tech developments. But if you say, okay, basic, a basic Nigerian school, 
you know, you would see that um, there, there's a computer room, there's a computer lab, but no maybe functional. just it's not functional. It's not functional. They just cover it up. I've actually seen a school, a primary school with a computer lab, but um, they just covered it up with um, nice, beautiful clothes, you know. <laughs> so they said the children come in once in a while, you know, to. So, you know, but the, the thing is that just few schools enjoy that privilege. So I think children should enjoy that. Um, exposure to computers. If you have kids, let them um, teach them a few things, how to use Microsoft Word. You know, they are very smart, and that's actually, the, that's what I feel, that's the you know, foundation to... So I think, I think thinking of this, you we're 3.0. Mm. The Nigerians in our midst are thinking we are the pioneers. Mm. But I suspect <laughs> this has to do with years and years of research. Yes. For me to be hearing now, some people have been working on it like for forever, <laughs> right? So I would say we'll probably tap into it, like we always do, which is we are users, maybe not creators, and later we would adapt, I suppose. As I agree that we, should, we can, yes, hope, but I think at this point we're just going to like tap in and use. Now, I like the fact that you're personalizing the internet, meaning it, 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 my, my footprints and my identity will be synced to my usage. Mm -hmm. What I think that would do, like you say, is eliminate frauds and all Security. those irregularities that are currently fraught in the web space. But I also know that as you're creating, the fraudsters and the evildoers are also, <laughs> also, creating. also adapting. <laughs> so they are getting better. Just the way you say hunters are now learning to shoot without aiming, the uh, bears are learning to fly, fly without fetching. Exactly. <laughs> so we're getting there too. So I'm now thinking with this level of, of um, transparency in the internet, I'm not, I'm not afraid of the potential risk. Mm. that can evolve for me because now it's so personalized. You remember when this old W thing started? The web mm -hmm. thing started, we were so happy. You could now reach people via Skype call. There were so many advantages. Mm -hmm. And now we are fraught with the disadvantages. My worry now is what are the potential risks of this 3.0 thing? Right, well, um, let's look at the opportunities first before yes. we look we at saw, We saw the opportunities. So the, the opportunities are great. So if we look at the opportunities, <laughs> let's say the web 3.0, will. Um, we're going to look at the blockchain. And for instance, I think people in Nigeria don't know how lucky they are. Nigeria has the highest amount of crypto holder in Africa. So there are about 11 million crypto holders in Nigeria. So um, by Web3.0, we'll secure their, their, equity, their investment their investment and everything. And then Web3 will um, create more job opportunities in terms of cyber crime. And then we're going to see a lot of e-commerce stores. We're going to help create, like what you're talking about, the underdevelopment opportunity, which we're not looking up to our leaders anymore. We, we're taking we're the bull on. Mm -hmm. we we working towards surviving. So Web 3.0, we create those things. But as we go back to it, is Africa ready for Web 3.0 in terms of security? Those are the risks I was, those are the risks talking, about. was talking about. So um, based on that, I feel like we're not ready, but somehow we have to be ready. Because we just the come back, the pandemic we just came from is COVID. But I'm telling you, next pandemic will be over the internet. Yeah, sure. Mm. Bog, international bog attack. Mal, so international bog attack, warfare, you can control the systems. So we're so addicted to the internet at the moment. Tell me, how many people can live without their phones or without going on WhatsApp or Facebook? There was a time we had an um, outrage where Facebook, WhatsApp, Web Instagram was working. Yeah. They shut down, right? Now tell me, we're going to go there. But like, instead of you staying in your house for three weeks, you're not going to go online for three weeks. <laughs> I, will stay, I will not stay in my house for three weeks. <laughs> you know, so, we are going to engage the Zoom guests, but shortly, you know, this period, you, we are talking about building infrastructure on land, but right now, people are thinking of how to build visibility and influence online and have gain access to system from their room. Mm. You can fight warfare. True. Mm. So, um, Raymond, you want to chip in something? Yeah, I think pretty much everything has already been said. And I quite agree with all that has been said in, in the room. Uh, so, as you pointed out, um, the internet is going to lead the fourth industrial revolution. And um, it's no longer a question of choice. Whether you like it or not, the internet has come to stay. And we can see uh, the amount of transformation and the, the, amount, the level of disruption that internet has brought, brought to the, the way we, we are used to doing things over the years. So definitely, it's going to have its low side. And I, I heard somebody in the room complaining that, okay, how do we um, cater to the uh, security breaches that are bound to arise from um, the civilized nature of the internet? Uh, unfortunately, it just has to, uh, we can't avoid that. But I also believe there are also mechanisms within the, uh, within the framework of, uh, of, of 
um, ICT that could be used to address some of these uh, breaches. And we have seen it uh, well tested in the banking sector. We are all users of um, ATM cards. We are buying things online. We are using OTPs and all of that. So uh, as, as much as um, 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 criminal-minded elements who are also on the Internet continue to um, 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 perhaps sort of um, uh, uh, encroach on people's personal data, there will also be means within the context of Internet to address some of, of those challenges. And luckily, I, I, I should say that Africa has also put its front foot in that regard. Recently, Google um, set up an office in, in Ghana. So I believe even the techies are seeing the prospect of um, the Internet and ICT as a whole in the continent. Um, so I believe um, uh, over the years, we are going to um, um, also improve our own local skills and also benefit from the... Um, from the forex that can come from uh, from uh, from internet and associated technological products. That's my take on the matter. Thank All you. right, Raymond. Thank you very much. Raymond will be next after the break. <laughs>